the mathematical equations that describe fluid dynamics as we know, the Navier-Stokes equations. Tell us a little bit about the core premise of the Navier-Stokes equations and then what is it about those equations that makes them so real? Yeah, um, when you get down to it, uh, um, it's just basically conservation equations. Uh, um, basically, there are uh, uh, three conservation principles that are at work. Um, let's say you have a big bucket and you have a tap, fluid coming in and there is some leak and fluid going out. You have a mass balance. You know, what's in the bucket is what comes in minus what goes out. So that's like a mass balance. Uh, um, and momentum balance is nothing but just uh, Newton's laws. Uh, um, a fluid flows because somebody has pushed it. So in other words, some, you know, if you take a pipe, uh, you apply a pressure, and that pressure at one end uh, will make it uh, flow from one end to the other end. Um, and, and that, again, is described by uh, a momentum balance. And then often you also have what is called energy balance, uh, which deals with uh, heating, uh, like putting your uh, cup of coffee in the microwave. And it comes out hot because somebody has poured in energy. So those are the three basic principles. Uh, and you can think of three main equations. But what makes it very difficult is you stand on top of a bridge and you watch the water river flow. Every little parcel of that river flow is zigzagging. That's what we call as turbulent. So you can think of the river being made up of billions, trillions of little parcels of fluid. Each of them have their own balance as mass balance. Um, some of the water could evaporate, for example, or rain can fall down. Momentum balances, energy balances. And that's what the underlying mathematical equation. So you can think of, you talk about mass, momentum, and energy balances of billions and billions of chunks of fluids and they're rubbing against each other. It's a very complicated problem. And often, you simplify the problem, you try to solve it on your laptop, but often the physics is so complicated, uh, so you can't build a rocket or you can't build a engine with just your laptop. So you take it up, you make the problem big, you try to analyze it, and you try to improve your design.